Good morning. We're thankful that you've chosen to join us this morning for this study of God's Word. We hope that the day finds you doing well, and we hope that you are making plans to worship God today, and we would love for you to come and be our guest at Pyburn Street Church of Christ. We will come together at 9 o'clock this morning for Bible study, followed by worship at 9.50. We will also come together this evening at 6 o'clock, and this evening will be our monthly question and answer night. For those who may not be familiar with this, I take questions that have been submitted by members of the congregation and sometimes from people that hear programs such as this on the radio, and I answer those questions in uh, the session that we have on the third Sunday night of each month. And tonight we will be having that question and answer session at 6 o'clock. We would love for you to join us for that study. We also gather on Wednesday evenings, also at 6 o'clock, for our midweek Bible study. We have classes available for all ages, and we would love for you to come, bring your family, bring your Bible, come and study God's Word with us. We would love for you to come and join us for any or all of these upcoming services. On the west bank of the Red Sea, the children of Israel were having a crisis of faith. They appear to be trapped with mountains on two sides, the sea ahead of them, and the mighty Egyptian army to their rear. Just a short time prior, they had witnessed God's mighty power in delivering them out of Egypt. They had started on their journey toward the land of promise with great hopes and expectations. But all this hope quickly faded when it seemed that they had nowhere to turn. As I'm sure many of us would have been, the Israelites were terrified and they cried out to Moses in Exodus 14 verses 11 through 15. Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. God tells Moses that there is only one thing that they can do in this situation, and that is to get up and move forward. He did not bring them out of Egypt to take them back to Egypt. He did not bring them out of Egypt to leave them in the wilderness. He didn't bring them out to camp there, to remain there, for this was not the land of promise. What God is telling Moses is there is so much more that lies ahead, and all that is left for them to do is to go forward. Friends, as God's children, we have trusted in God to forgive us and to save us. But do we really trust God with our current circumstances of life? Now, I don't know what your personal circumstances may be, but do we trust God for deliverance from these trials of life that we face from time to time? To us as individuals, the Lord may be saying, Give up your apathy. Stop wallowing in self-pity. Stop feeding your bitterness and your anger. Stop resting where you are and press on. Keep moving forward. As both individual Christians and as congregations of the Lord's church, the Lord is calling us to keep pressing on, to keep our eyes focused upon Jesus and upon the mission that he has called us to. Today I would like for us to use the story of Israel's departure from Egypt as the basis for our lesson. First, we must move forward from fear to faith. When Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and they saw the Egyptians marching after them and they were terrified. And the children of Israel then cried out unto the Lord. Friends, when we fail to go forward, 
We stop walking by faith and we start living in fear. The minute that we stop going forward, making progress in our spiritual walk, the next thing we know, we find ourselves living in fear. It was the Apostle Paul who gave us this thought in Philippians 3, verses 12 through 15, where he says, Not as though I had already attained, either we already perfect, but I follow after, that if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. And then Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-8, through 8, to give all diligence to add to our faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ." Friends, it is true. If we don't move forward in our faith, in our confidence, and in our trust, in God and in his word, then we will be overcome with fear. When Israel marched out of Egypt, there wasn't any fear in their lives. And we can imagine that there was nothing but joy and singing and celebration and worship taking place as long as they were moving forward. They were full of faith. They were full of hope. But when all that stopped, fear replaced faith. God told them that they had to keep moving forward in faith. Next, we need to learn to stop our complaining and our murmuring and move forward. Well, notice what the children of Israel did. They came to Moses and they began to complain. Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? Friends, this happens every time. When fear replaces faith, then complaining and murmuring set in. Israel blamed their problems on Moses. Well, the truth is, when we start complaining and murmuring about leadership, as in the case with Moses, the problem is not leadership, but with the followers. Israel refused to take responsibility for their own failures, and as usual, complaining was a sure sign of no forward movement. Paul admonishes us in Philippians 2, verses 14 and 15, to do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world." But instead of being a joyous and happy and victorious people on the move, they're standing still murmuring and complaining against Moses and against the God who had brought them out of Egypt. So here it is. People on the move with God have little time for murmuring and complaining. It doesn't mean that that there's never anything wrong, that life is always pleasant. Friends, we understand that things do not always go our way. But when we continue to move forward with our eyes on the promised land, our promised land being heaven, then we don't have time to murmur. We don't have time to complain. But also, we have to watch for backsliding. Israel said to Moses, This is what we told you in Egypt. Leave us alone. Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it is better to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. So what do we have? Israel is here saying, Moses, just take us back to Egypt. Now can you imagine this? They had just escaped from the tyranny of Pharaoh, and within two or three days they're standing here saying, just take us back. We would be better off in Egypt. But Christian backsliding is our desire to go back to Egypt, 
to go back into the ways of the world, to go back to the bondage and the slavery of sin. Friends, it was the Hebrew writer who said, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. But if we stop moving forward, eventually we're going to start moving backward. Do you find yourself looking at your life and missing some of those things from the past? Do you find yourself wishing that you could go back and do some of the things that you used to do? Well, spiritually speaking, when the past looks better than the future, then we have stopped going forward. And like Israel, we need words of faith and encouragement in our life. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Moses had seen God do great things. He knew that God would see them through. And God is saying here to Israel, move forward in faith. Friends, confession alone is not moving forward. Faith is only faith if you are able to act upon that faith. If we're not going forward, we may be hindering others behind us from going forward as well. Now friends, there were several million people in that valley there by the Red Sea. The people in the middle couldn't go anywhere until the people on either end moved. Well today, there are a lot of people standing behind us, watching, waiting for us to make the right move, waiting for us to move forward. Well, failing to go forward prevents us from seeing the working of God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Take the rod and stretch it out toward the sea. You're going to move. Well, friends, when Moses obeyed, the winds began to blow and the waters began to roll back. God always moves when we're willing to obey him and take the step of faith that he asks of us. But many have it backward today. They say, if God would only do the miraculous, then I would be able to move forward. But folks, it doesn't work that way. God says, you take me at my word. You obey me. You move forward in your faith. And when you do this, then I will work in your life. This reminds me of a couple of scriptures in Isaiah 40 and verse 31. It says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint. And then in Ephesians 3 and verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. If we are willing to take the step to go forward, then God will part the seas and God will destroy the enemies. When we obey him, then God will work in our lives. But we have to ask ourselves two questions. What is God's will for us individually and what is God's will for the church? Well, the answer is the same. God wants us to move forward. If you're not a Christian, then move forward. Do this by obeying the gospel of Christ. The scriptures tell us the way that this is accomplished. Well, first we have to have faith. For faith, we understand that without faith it is impossible to please God. Then we act upon that faith. We repent of our sins. And then we confess that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we're baptized for the remission of our sins. And then we continue to live a faithful Christian life. And friends, what that means is that we continue moving forward toward heaven. Or it may be that we look at ourselves and we see that we're becoming lukewarm and fearful. Well, the message is the same. Move forward. Reignite that spiritual fire by becoming more involved in the kingdom of God. Or it may be that you've backslidden and are no longer standing justified in the sight of God. Move forward. Repent. Be restored to the faith. Let us all be seeking out those ways that we can continue moving forward 
as individuals and as the body of Christ. Friends, we thank you so much for joining us for our program today. We hope that the Lord blesses you today with a wonderful Lord's Day.